Go back in time to the Wild West, where Lawless ruled the land and legends were born. In this video, we delve into the gripping tale of John Shaw, a notorious outlaw whose life was as untamed as the vast frontier itself. But what sets Shaw apart from the countless other desperados of his time is a bizarre and intriguing twist that involves a final toast with whiskey long after his last breath was drawn. Join us as we navigate the dusty trails of the Old West to uncover the extraordinary story of John Shaw, the man who drank his last whiskey after he died. Little information exists about the early lives of William Evans and John Shaw before they embraced the outlaw lifestyle. Evans, also known as William Smith or Smythe, had a past as an ex-convict. In their early to mid-twenties, both men made a fateful decision to abandon the cowboy life in favor of a more illicit path. The notorious incident that ultimately led to a fatal confrontation in Canyon Diablo unfolded on the night of April 7th, 1905, in the Wigwam Saloon in Winslow, Arizona. Dressed in their finest attire, Evans and Shaw wasted no time. Before midnight, they approached the bar, ordered shots of the prevalent rot-gut whiskey, and before drinking, they turned around and pulled out their revolvers to hold up a group of seven men playing poker at one of the tables. At gunpoint, the duo coerced the gamblers to relinquish between $200 and $600 worth of silver coins. Without feeding a single shot, Evans and Shao made a hasty exit through the front door. The deputy sheriff of Navajo County, Pete Pemberton, who also happened to be the saloon owner, was promptly notified. After assessing the crime scene, Pemberton informed Sheriff Chet Hawk, younger brother of Jim Hawk. In the aftermath of the robbery, Pemberton and City Marshal Bob Giles discovered a trail of silver coins along the railroad tracks leading to Flagstaff. The assumption was that the bandits had boarded a moving train, losing coins from their pockets in the process. Responding swiftly, Sheriff Hauk journeyed to Flagstaff for an investigation. Despite an exhaustive search, neither the bandits nor pertinent information was found. Disheartened, the lawmen boarded the train back to Winslow. However, during the return journey, they received word that two suspicious individuals were spotted hiding in the bushes near the railroad tracks close to the turn to Canyon Diablo. The town of Canyon Diablo was located about 25 miles west of Winslow, next to the Gorge Canyon Diablo and the border of the Navajo Reservation. It was still a wild place in 1905, though by that time it was nearly a ghost town with only a small population. According to the tombstone epitaph, Canyon Diablo was described as being the toughest hellhole in the West, which may have been at least part of the reason why Evans and Shaw chose to flee there instead of Flagstaff. The two lawmen followed their instincts and stopped the train a couple miles past the town and then got off to walk back on foot. By the time they had made it onto Hell Street, the main road through town, the sun was just beginning to set. Sheriff Hauk and Pemberton initiated contact with Fred Voles, the proprietor of a small store in town since 1886, engaged in trade with the Navajo and the Hopi communities. After the usual questioning, Voles told the policeman that earlier in the day, there had been two well-dressed men standing outside the trading post for a long time and acting suspiciously. At that moment, Evans and Shaw appeared around the corner of the trading post, catching the attention of the lawman. The bandits strolled in the opposite direction, heading towards the train depot, prompting Hauk and Pemberton to pursue them. Maintaining a distance of six to eight feet, the lawman confronted Evans and Shao, instructing them to submit to a search. In response, one of the bandits defiantly retorted, 
No one searches us. A tense standoff ensued, with all four men suddenly reaching for their sidearms. At point-blank range, a volley of gunfire erupted, and the pairs found themselves face to face. Within this brief and intense exchange, Hawk, closing in to within four feet of the bandits, fired his weapon. Shaw, failing to land any hits with his initial five shots, began reloading his gun but was abruptly struck in the head by one of Hawk's bullets. Simultaneously, Pemberton wounded Evans in the leg, causing him to collapse while continuing to fire. With his last bullet, Evans aimed for Huck and fired, but Pemberton shot him again, this time in the shoulder, which knocked the weapon out of his hand. Though the bullet passed through Huck's coat, grazing him across the stomach and exiting through the right side, the wound was deemed non-serious. In the span of approximately three seconds, Shaw lay lifeless and Evans was injured. Notably, adhering to the common practice of the Old West, most men filled their six-shooters with only five rounds so they could rest the firing pin on an empty slot and avoid accidents. Sheriff Hoke, Shaw, and Evans each expended their full five bullets, while Pemberton, unusually equipped with an extra round, contributed to a total of 21 shots fired. Immediately after the shootout, Sheriff Hauk had the body of Shaw placed in a pine wood coffin provided by Voles and buried in a shallow grave because of the extremely rocky soil. Meanwhile, Evans, surviving the gunfight, was transported to the Winslow Hospital for recovery before eventually being sentenced to nine years at Yuma Territorial Prison. $271 worth of silver coins was found in their possession. The night following the shootout, a group of cowboys, once employed by the Aztec Land and Cattle Company, were having drinks at the Wigwam Saloon when they heard the news and how both Evans and Shaw failed to drink the shots they had paid for on the night before. One of them came up with the idea of going to Canyon Diablo to exhume Shaw's corpse for one final drink. Between 15 and 20 men hastily volunteered for this unusual undertaking. As Sheriff Hauk and Pemberton did, they boarded a westbound train and arrived at Canyon Diablo around dawn on April 10, 1905. First, they had a few more drinks at the train station and then went to borrow some shovels from Fred Voles to proceed, with digging up Shaw's coffin Voles was angry about what the drunken mob intended to do in the cemetery so. At first, he was reluctant in giving up his tools. However, he eventually gave in and provided not only the shovels, but a Kodak camera. According to differing accounts, Voles either wanted pictures to collect reward money, being that he was directly involved in the demise of the outlaws, while others proposed the images were taken for posterity. After opening Shaw's coffin, two of the cowboys carefully lifted his body, propping it against the picket fence surrounding another man's grave. Shaw's countenance, seemingly smiling, unsettled the men, some of whom began to cry. After giving Shaw a plentiful gulp of whiskey, taking a few pictures and saying some prayers, his body was returned to the coffin, now accompanied by a half-empty bottle, and gently placed back into the grave. The boys hopped on the next eastbound train and rode back to Winslow. The pictures were displayed on the walls of the Wigwam Saloon in Winslow until the 1940s, when the building was torn down. By that time, the ghost town of Canyon Diablo was reopened and renamed Two Guns. In a tragic turn of events on October 28, 1905, merely seven months after the notorious Canyon Diablo shootout, Deputy Pemberton became embroiled in another violent incident. Inebriated, he fatally shot Winslow Town Marshal Bob Giles during a dispute in the Wigwam Saloon. Pemberton faced arrest and subsequent conviction, leading to a seemingly substantial 25-year sentence. However, 
The twist in the tale unfolded when Pemberton surprisingly managed to secure his freedom after serving only a fraction of his prescribed sentence. The details surrounding his acquittal remain shrouded in the complex and often unpredictable legal dynamics of the time. This abrupt turn of events stands as a testament to the enigmatic nature of justice in the Wild West during the early 20th century. As we close the chapter on the extraordinary life and bizarre fate of John Shaw, the Wild West outlaw who, in an unexpected twist, shared one last drink with death, were left with a haunting glimpse into the gritty realities of the Old West. So what do you think about the story of John Shaw? Let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to stay updated on our journey through the captivating stories of the Wild West. Please like and share if you find the video content interesting and useful. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and comment below so as not to miss the upcoming interesting videos. Thanks for watching.